In this video, I would like to show you the second option that you have when you want to enable multicast in your ESDA deployment. In one of my previous videos, I covered the native multicast configuration and how you can test the solution and a couple of commands that you can apply to identify how multicast works when you have a SEA deployment and you are using native multicast. So in this case, we're going to move to the second option that you have available when you have SEA. In this case, a hidden replication. The difference between these two ways to implement multicast is basically how the traffic will be handled by the switches. So for example, in native multicast, the overlay multicast traffic is encapsulated in the underlay SSM multicast group, right? So when you use head end replication, basically there is a unicast packet that will be sent to all the fabric edges where the receivers are connected and requesting traffic from that specific multicast group. There might be some cases that you need to use this solution in case you don't have your multicast configuration ready for native multicast, you might use this option uh, as a temporary solution. Well, probably you have some intermediate switches in of life that you need to remove that you cannot enable multicast. So this might be a solution that you can apply, right? So you need to take also in consideration how big is your fabric, right? Because if you have 50, 60 fabric edges, all the unicast packet that will be sent to all those receivers, right? So in this case, I have my machines and let me show you the, uh, the even G. This is, let me put it here. Okay, as you know, I try to simulate as much as I can. I use even G for this lab. So I have my border control plane and my fabric edges. So PC2, is going to be one of the receivers and PC1 will be the source of the multicast traffic. Let me show you the configuration that I have here. So this is my PC2. This is the IP that I have and this is my PC1. The first thing I'm gonna do is try to ping PC1. I know you can see here PC1, PC1, I was trying to change this name. I don't know why, but I cannot do it. But anyway, you know that we are talking about PC2 here, PC1 here, and the PCS has different IPs, right? Uh, I'm gonna ping 10, 196.66.10, just to confirm that we have network connectivity. So we have network connectivity between PC1 and PC2. Okay, what I'm going to do here is first run a couple of commands that you can use when you are troubleshooting hidden replication. Let me go to my secure CRT. So I have my fabric edge one, two, border control plane one. Let me open my border control plane two. I'm going to run a couple of debug here. So we can see the star G information and the entries and how the border control plane tool will create those entries and all that. So I'm gonna start first with the boot IP and then my VRF. I'm gonna use for this lab, this multicast group 239.1.1.1, right? I'm going to run the same command here on Fabric Edge 2, where the, the receiver is connected. So this is the Fabric Edge 2. So I say let's run a couple of debug IP, IGMP, VRF Corp, and, and the multicast group. 
Pro, IP PIN, DRS, Corp, 339.1. Okay. You can see show IP multicast that multicast routing disable in all the SDA fabric is disabled, right? We don't have underlay multicast routing. So what I'm gonna do here is open PC2. This is PC1, this is PC2. And I'm gonna generate some multicast traffic here. So let's change the value to 39, that one, that one, that one, the port 50, PTL, I'm gonna use 30. And I'm gonna start the multicast request, right? So we can see here what is going on, right? So you can see that we have the source, which is the host.11 trying to join the 239.1.1.1. The one, the one, the one. We have the sarcoma E here, right? And we can see that it's sending the information also to the RP, which is 251. In this case, both of my border nodes are working as a RP. The first thing that you need to understand also here, which is important, is about, about how the PC will be able to communicate with the RP of this multicast traffic if the source is not sending any traffic yet, right? So, so when you have these kind of a scenario, what is going to happen is the SDA, SDA will use the EID watch table that basically can request the information about a specific IP without real traffic, right? So I'm gonna check first the show this instance ID, I think it's 4099, it's IPv4 and I think it's EID watch, right? The switch need to send a map request and map reply for this specific RP, right? So everything that is here, you don't need actual traffic to send the request for this IP, which is the RP 97. So also SDA relies a lot on RPF. But that's something we need to check. So, for example, here we are going to check the show IP, RPF, and let's see, VRF Corp. We are going to specify the multicast IP address, 97. So, we know how this device, if they have a neighbor for this specific RP, and as you can see here, we'll use the interface 4099. This is 251, which is related to my border. You have the RP IP address. So that's something also that you need to check. And also the show IP and route, VRF, that's usually something that you want to see. The star comma E for that specific group. And you can see the ongoing interface. And also you want to check the IGMP, VRF, Corbett and groups. So you can see here that dot 11 is sending the request for this multicast group. Okay. So let's check the border control plane too. Let's see what we can see here in the M route. Okay, we can see the star comma E for this specific IP address and the ongoing interface, list 4099. And this is the all of that is generating, oh, I think it's the last hop router. Okay, so that's something that you can check. Also remember that, and I'm gonna show you the configuration that I pushed from Catalyst Center because we have redundant RPs, we should use MSDP so they can synchronize about the multicast traffic. So MSDP, VRF, Corp, 
summary and you can see that we have 74.98 that's my border control plane run which is this dot 98 so that configuration seems to be right so now what i'm gonna do is let me see this is pc1 and this is pc2 let me first start generating this multicast stream so let's go to administrator let's see okay so 239 no, one, that one, one, 150 let's use ttl 30. so let's start generating this traffic let's double check the multicast traffic and what is going on between these two PCs. So Chris come 150. Let's see. Okay. So I'm not receiving any multicast traffic. So let me see if I can ping this PC. Then the 196.66. Okay, I can ping that device. The 10. Okay. So let me stop this and let me see if I can send one more time. Let's check. What is going on here? I have this border control plane two. Let's check first the fabric H1, BRF, or let's see what we have here. We have 66.10, that's the incoming interface but i don't see anything about the ongoing interface let me see if i interface on the one okay i can see that it's up in register that's 97 that's the rp so let me stop this as you can see here, it took some time, but now I'm receiving traffic. Received a total of 40, right? And now, as you can see here, before we didn't see the ongoing interface and the communication now directly from this specific Fabric Edge 1 to the Rlock.41, which is the Fabric Edge 2, right? So you can see that this is 40 and this is 41. Something that also you can check here is show IP VRF for neighbors, right? You can see here the neighbors that is 251, that is the RP, the border control plane two and 40, which is the first hub router generating the multicast stream. Now there is no hello about PIM. So you might not see the same neighbors everywhere. If we go to border control plane two, show IP beam neighbors, no, BRF, or the neighbors, you will see that if we don't have 40 or 41. When you work with the SDA, there are not really IP beam hellos that will form base or on demand based on the traffic that is generated. So let's check here, show IP and route VRF. Okay, we have the M here, which means this is a MSDP entry. That means the border control plane one send this information to border control plane two. We have this is a candidate for MSDP advertisement. So it will send it to border control plane two. 
that might be the reason why we didn't receive the packets right away. Also remember that it's a virtual environment, but these are a couple of commands that you can use to verify that your multicast traffic is working well. So pro probably in another video, I will cover what happened if the multicast the stream is coming from outside your fabric. We can check the multicast table and all that. But for now, this is what I have and hopefully this can help you somehow. So thanks for watching.